Well, good morning, everybody. How are we doing? This is Jeremiah. We have a fantastic webinar for you today. I hope you're ready. Text is something near and dear to, to my heart. Uh, to a very quick story, you know, I actually started working in my dad's office when I was about 10 years old. <laughs> it's the little secret that we always had all these years. And you know what I did at age 10? I did the Croy lettering on his plans. And I was fast. You, know, you imagine this little 10 year old choop, 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 spinning that little wheel, pumping out the little Croy lettering. And you know, he pay me like five dollars an hour to do that <laughs> so i was making like you know 20 25 dollars of my allowance money but by do, working in his office doing that but you know that that was text remember that remember those croy lettering and those wheels for the lettering were those were fonts right and and they were expensive and, and basically everything was just Helvetica, right? You didn't have a lot of fonts. And so that's why I've always really loved the discussion of fonts and, and text in CAD because, uh, um, you know, symbology is, you know, okay, you know, yes, we can make more advanced little hieroglyphics and things. But with CAD, we can finally use the broad spectrum of fonts available. And it's so exciting because they're just, they're just fascinating to look at and to choose and, and and i've always enjoyed them so that is our fun little webinar we have ahead of us um, we will be um showing off all these important things about text uh particularly to, you know to open you up to these uh possibilities of all these wonderful little fonts that you can use but of course all the problems uh, that come up from trying to use a font. And that's specifically what we're going to really get into because, you know, if you want to use a font, well, you need to be able to do so without problems, right? Um, I, I have one quick housekeeping item here for you, uh, other than mentioning this is being recorded. So it is going to be available to you on the website later today and, and, and forever. Um, but also, I hope you'll have questions during this. Uh, there is a button at the bottom of your screen that says Q and A, and that is for question and answer. And, and I actually recommend go ahead and click it now, get that dialog box kind of situated on your screen. Um, it'll make it a little quicker for you to type a question, but note, you're going to be able to see the answers that we type to other people's questions. So it makes a fantastic companion while you are joining us on this font journey to uh, see how text in CAD can be simpler, easier, error-free, all the above, right? Um, so get ready to punch in all those questions you have. And other than that, hey, Jake, it's time to take it away. Thank you very much, Jer. Um, sounds like you really want to present um, about text. Um, we can tell all the little stories. So um, just a, a little quick heads up too. Um, obviously, we're going to be going into all kinds of little errors and examples of, of situations that come up that we've seen, that uh, we've heard about, that I've read about. I definitely am in no way a text master. Um, we would love to hear your guys' banter on different opinions of stuff. Um, I think this will be a, a bit of a, a touchy subject for, for some, and, and hopefully it's it's beneficial to a lot. So um, as we go through things, we're going to be cranking through a lot of different things. So from like a beginning or a beginner's aspect, I, I definitely think this is a little above a beginner's side of things. Um, and if you're confused or you have questions about anything, definitely, definitely get those questions in. If you have questions right now that you hope that we answer, please get those in because we can go down all kinds of rabbit holes and I want to make sure that we kind of address some of the, the important topics here. So anyways, we are going to go on. This is me. That is all. Our outline, we're going to really focus um, specifically from like a how CAD functions with text, just understanding um, a little bit of the history. I I went down a, a pretty deep rabbit hole on the history of text and found all kinds of stuff and and conflicting information and and who's right who's wrong so so i'm just you know listing what i've uh, found here but really then bringing land effects into the equation how we 
function with with text and what tools do we have to to speed up some of the processes um but again just really figuring out all those issues that that might come up we're definitely going to broach the subject of true type versus shx um it's pretty heavy on the front end of this um session here so um you know bear with it there but uh dealing with errors is going to be our next little point and then if we have time I know annotative is a is a touchy topic for a lot of people. It could be its own webinar. This whole thing could be weeks and weeks and weeks of discussions. So trying to fit everything in, we're going to do our best. So, oh, go back. Sorry, have a touchy mouse. So um, just as a little background, the metal typesetting back in the first days of of printing and stuff like that, the font size is actually defined by the metal cube where they actually molded the font onto. And so the distance between the, what they call the ascender and the descender between the, the text itself was considered the point size. So when we talk about 12 point font and 10 point font and that kind of stuff, this is really what it's talking about. Now, obviously in the digital days, we don't have a little metal cube that we have to, to measure, um, but this, digital space between this invisible space between the letters is called an M square and is essentially replicating what they used to do in metal type setting. So think about these point font sizes um, as such. So if you're looking at different fonts and stuff like that, what it's really talking about is, is that distance between the ascender and the descender um, for that purpose. Now, we're going to see all kinds of reading on the fact that one 72-point uh, font size is one inch, and, and it breaks down with the fact that a point is one seventy-seconds of an inch. Um, and so when we're looking at this um, text that we're putting on plans and stuff like that and figuring out what size um, text is, this is kind of the breakdown. So if we're going to make a multiplier of this 72 point font size really dividing 1 into 70 or 72 into 1 is going to give you this 0.0139 ish 89 um multiplier and that's how many inches per point which means that if we're looking at it from a paper space and we always look at things on the paper space side right what is the end result going to be um, if we know what this multiplier is and what size of font that we want, point font size, we essentially should be able to um, extrapolate the height of what that text is going to be, right? Um, so if you're kind of used to using CAD and know that the typical 1 8 inch equals roughly 12 point font, um, then we got to just kind of figure out what that is. But based on this logic is that really the per point size that equals one inch and we say to you go ahead and print something out and measure it so this is something that i did i printed these all out um, and you can tell based on on this little guy and it totally depends on the fonts totally depends on how they're kind of constructed but from a measuring the font itself, not the margins, not the ascender to descender, you can see that, well, 72 point font does not equal an inch. It's actually a hundred point font, which is um, kind of shown here on, with that ruler there. Um, 72 point font is obviously 0. 0.72 of an inch. But again, that's based on this text, this font style. So if we kind of break it down a little bit further, you can see I've got this back image on this 72 point font and this back image on the 100 point font, same font style. You can see that its text is measuring, like we said, 0 0.72, 0 0.99. Obviously I was in CAD, rounding issues. Um, but then take a look at the ascender and descender length. So if we were to look at the very tippy top of the the letter 
to the very bottom of the lowercase letters. So these guys that hang down into this, this section here, um, you can see that obviously that size is a little bit larger. And this is definitely closer to an inch, but it's not an inch. So look at the same point font size, but a different font. And you can tell that it's even measuring way off of itself. So when we're looking at this and trying to figure out what are we required to put onto a plan um, and what we're going to be held to as far as like a, maybe a city regulation or something like that, that text has to be this size, what are they measuring? I'm assuming they're measuring the letters because in AutoCAD, what it's doing when it measures font is the size, the total height of capital letters. So that's what it's using to size the text based on that, not based on um, the ascending and the descending side of things. So we're going to move on past that. But just to prove a, a little bit of a point that in CAD, we are actually much closer to 100 point font. So doing one divided by 100 to get 0 0.01 inches per point um, is a really important number. So for anything non-annotative, obviously we need to know what that scale factor is of the drawing in order to set the correct text height, okay? So we know that we're working from a, a paper space perspective that, um, you know, 0 0.01 inches per point font would be, if I wanted 12 point font, would be 0.12 inches, okay? Now we know that if we did uh, an eighth inch high text, one divided by eight is actually 0.125. So we're really, really close on that point font size translation there. Um, but that's again, paper space. So how do we figure out what the model space height actually needs to be? So in this little equation here, um, we can see that we've got just a couple example point font sizes. We're gonna take our one divided by 100 point font here, one inch divided by 100. So that's our 0 0.01 inches per point times that by our point font size equals our paper space height. Now to get it into a model space height that will translate when you actually do a viewport, you're basically taking this scale factor here. And so depending on whether you're using an architectural or an engineering scale, whether you're in metric, inches or feet, um, there is a scale factor, okay? Um, and so if you multiply that scale factor by your paper space height, you will get your model space height. So there's paper, there's model. So um, when we look at it from a CAD perspective and we can, and we'll be, bouncing back and forth once we get into AutoCAD. Um, but land effects has such a clean and easy way to not only set up your standards, um, but just to manage the fonts and stuff like that. Um, but essentially, if we're going to take that example again and look at these numbers, where do they correspond to in CAD? Well, the point font size goes to the styles of text that you're going to um, actually want to use. And this is in our textile manager. Obviously, we have our AutoCAD style textiles um, that are defined in the drawing, but this here, the text manager, is kind of the holding point of all of your different textiles and their point font sizes. You'll notice that we actually say, what point font size do you want? We don't say, how high do you want the text, right? It's showing you what the height of the text will be based on the point font size, but we're making it simple. We're trying to tie that standard, you working in Word or you're working um, in Photoshop. It's always point font size, so why not throw that um, into that dialog box? And then we need to set our scale, right? The land effects plot scale is what controls what that scale factor is on the drawing. And knowing these two numbers, just putting these two things accurately is going to automatically size your text no matter what. So um, from there, we are going to just jump right into 
the hard truth of SHX versus true type. Um, obviously, there's conditions one way or another that will make you stay with SHX versus true type, but why don't we try to shed a little bit of light on some of the issues um, with both? Um, obviously, the pros just in general are going to, on the true type, are going to outweigh um, anything that's going on with the SHX, but just to just to name a few, um, here here's what we've got here. Now, some of them are, are interchangeable as far as you know having a full character set. The, those are definitely things to consider, and we'll talk about that. Um, but so many different issues. I don't know how many people have ever worked with importing actual PDFs into CAD and seeing that the the actual text does not translate and it's all broken line work. Um, that is a result of using an SHX font. Um, the previews, I don't know if you've ever noticed, as you've been looking at the, the fonts to pick from, but they actually don't have previews of the styles. If you see a preview um, of a style that's typically an SHX um, in AutoCAD, it's more than likely a, uh, a translated version of a true type that they've also included to show what that looks like. Um, the graphics aren't as great. Uh, they're, they're raster versus vector. Um, one of the big ones here, and you can call this a pro or a con, I think it's absolutely a con, is that if you're using an SHX font and you accidentally put it on a layer with a color that is thick, it will print thick. The text will be affected by the color or the CTB or the STB that you're you're actually using. Um, and I think the biggest one, especially as we're getting into um, the day and age where Revit is a, uh, a big player um, with projects, Revit does not support shape files. They only support the true type. So um, it makes it pretty clear that if we can try to migrate this way, there's so many more benefits um, of that. So a couple of these images are maybe some things that you've you've noticed or seen with text disappearing, seeing this message saying, hey, what, what's being substituted, um, or even seeing that, hey, simplex is just replacing everything, and how do I address that kind of a thing? And for better or worse, it could be a, a pro, it could be a con, um, up to you. But the true type fonts are installed in a completely different place than the SHX deals. So um, true type have to be installed on the operating system. The cool part about that is if you're using a standard true type font, then everybody is going to have that if they're running a Windows operating system. The SHX uh, files, and we're going to show this one of the first little examples here. It sort of doesn't matter where it's at as long as it's path to in the support search path. Um, the scary part is, um, and this is what we'll show, is the SHX, if it is included with the DWG in its folder, and this happens uh, very commonly with any transmit, if that SHX is named what is defined in the drawing, but is the wrong font, it will reload and um, I guess, bypass the actual font style that should be used there. Um, so, so then if you delete that SHX font, it's going to error out because it doesn't know where to look and you're going to have issues. So just things to consider. And obviously copyright on both types is definitely an important thing to note. Make sure that, um, you know, you're, you're being, considerate about uh, what those copyrights are for the fonts that you're using. So when we talk about things to consider, understanding what character sets are available um, for the fonts that you're looking at. So um, these are a couple of the, the key ones that a lot of different SHX fonts just simply don't have. And so when you're looking at um, uh, running dimensions or um, doing things in, in different um, you know, translations and stuff like that, we're going to be missing a lot of these 
unique symbols that should be shown but won't and they translate some some way differently um, your font folder and we'll show this live is has a an ability to view what those are so it's really important that you do your research you can see that there's a lot of missing um, little characters and stuff in in even city blueprint you know maybe you're not going to run into it because you have some of the key ones that you need but um, come down the line and and you're going to run into something at some point so um, just getting into a little bit of where you might be able to look because hopefully what we're going to do here is is somewhat inspire you to to go play around and look um, start simple open microsoft word and look at the options those are all true type those are all things that are installed on your computer and um, CAD pulls all of those automatically into your list of fonts to choose from. So go take a look at them, um, start exploring different places and see what's actually out there. So um, while you guys gander at some of these, these fun ones, um, I'm going to sort of open it up to see if there's any questions we can help answer right now, Jer. Well, that's just perfect timing because we had a few people uh, talk specifically about, you know, what about, you know, what sort of fonts are people using and and they like the sort of architectural hand-drawn fonts. And uh, yeah, we, you know, we just showed some great resources for finding uh, ones like that. Um, like this, when I, when I did some of the help with finding some of these like for instance i love that font graphite i think that is just such a gorgeous gorgeous architectural font so um you know they're out there um and, and you really gotta just kind of go to those websites and um check them out um you know and then like uh you know steve uh steve cook even chimed in and said but isn't it true that uh, shx fonts print faster and and that's that's like a, a classic thing, you, you know. We we get into these, um, you know. I think everything in life, right? Whether it's even uh, politics or social circles, you know. But in in CAD, you know, you you, you get this uh, this thought in your head where you, oh yeah, that, that's the way it is, right? That's the way we've always done it. And it's like, sure, in the mid nineteen eighties, with a pin plotter. Uh, SHX fonts, that's what they were designed for. They were literally designed for pin plotters. And a pin plotter would go faster with a SHX font. That is correct. Um, it is not 1985 anymore. Um, and the the benefits of TTF fonts so vastly outweigh um, any perceived benefit of SHX font, let alone we're talking easily 25 years since that was even true it's been 25 years you have had absolutely the broad spectrum of ttf fonts available for you to use and people yes people will still go but that we have to use simplex because that's what i heard that's what you heard 25 years ago um and, and so definitely recommend um you take a stroll down font lane and and just look at how gorgeous you can make a plan and also make everybody very thankful that you do so because every pdf that you create is now actually searchable with text <laughs> mm -hmm. they can actually import that pdf into photoshop and the text is text you know with with shx that doesn't happen uh, you know, so everything involving a PDF, which is the entire industry, right? Everything is done off of PDFs now. And and to basically cripple everybody from being able to access the text in your PDF because you're still using SHX fonts, it, it's, can I say inexcusable? It's, it's, it's not right. So um, that's my, that's my little bully pulpit on the uh, uh, true type versus SHX. Uh, but are, I think that, that covers the most of our questions. Cool. Passionate about text. Um, <laughs> so so uh, another thing just to mention too, especially when we talk about the speed thing, I, I think it's really important to note from like a project setup perspective and, and making sure that 
text is in the right spot and it's not overly done in, in every single layout and, and stuff like that is really important. But I think a lot of um, maybe falsely accused um, on the text side of things, it really comes down to cleanup, you know, the actual drawing cleanup itself, making sure things are, are running um, smoothly in that regard would probably, you know, get the text a little less blame uh, on a lot of those things, but, um, but definitely things to test. So um, let's go ahead and uh, jump right into some demo stuff. So before we get working on, um, on specific files itself, when we're working through any kind of font issue, um, there's really, I want to kind of bring to light three specific um, dialogues that should kind of be open as we're looking. Um, so going to our, our start menu and just typing fonts and opening up your actual fonts location um, is going to be really important. So our Windows fonts, um, because this is going to help see what CAD is actually being able to look at um, on that front. The other one that we're going to kind of pull open here um, and is a little bit more scary to a lot of people um, is the registry editor. Okay. This one, we're not going to just click on and open. We want to make sure that we right click on it and run it as an admin. Um, doing that is going to um, kind of give us sort of more adjustment um, capabilities here. And I am going to uh, go to where this actually is. So if we um, are in here, we probably are somewhere in this random folder and we don't know where to go. So if we go to our local machine, the H key local machine, go to software, go to Microsoft, go clear down to Windows NT, and then to fonts. That whole path is where we need to go. And essentially this should be the same look here. And this is where, when we get into um, the errors that we're getting, whether the font is missing or um, cannot find the font file or whatever the, the messages are that you're getting, there, there could totally be um, a, a rogue entry shown in here that you actually don't see in your just your standard font list. Um, could be a duplicate, could have zeros after it, could could be really holding up the system from actually finding it. Um, so this is important to know where it is. To be able to find it faster, after you've you've gotten to this location, you can go up to your favorites and add to favorites and it will create um, a, a nice little spot. So no matter where you're at and you lose your place, you can just go ahead and go right back to it. So um, that's the second place is the registry editor. And the last one, we're going to go back to start and we're going to type command prompt. Now do the same thing here, right click, run as admin, say yes. And we're going to go here. Now, um, I'm going to enter this command in here, and this is what you're going to do. What this is actually doing is it's essentially going to hopefully mimic what we see in this list, um, but it's going to do it in um, kind of a, a secondary cross check of the back end. So, what we're going to do is we're going to type cd space a backslash windows backslash fonts and then you're going to hit enter once you're to this point you're going to type dir and you're going to hit enter this is that entire list and again when we're trying to troubleshoot um, these deals we have a lot of knowledge base articles that help walk you through this but um, we kind of wanted to just show you live how to get to this point because this is going to let you see every single font um, as it's listed and you might see duplicates here you might see um, randomly 
named versions here. Um, and this is where essentially if they're not showing up in this list, but they are here is where you can actually delete them um, out and, and make uh, edits. Do you want me to um, go any more into this, Jared? Do you have anything to shed on, on these three things? Because we're just going to kind of move on from that. I think we're just going to move on. But just, I mean, but basically just um, I, I think that the point just to linger for just one quick second is like, oh, my gosh, why are we doing this? Is like you know, this is the the one and only thing that can go wrong with true type fonts. Um, you know, so uh, a, a true type font problem, uh, you know, you go, oh, it's it's not it's not displaying correctly or it looks differently on another person's computer or you're getting an error message. This is is the the, the solution. And, and for an IT person, it's actually a rather simple solution. Is the font installed? What file name is the font installed with? What what is it? What does it say in the registry? And, and that's it. And to, to for an IT person, this is one of your easier you know five minute jobs um and, and so just knowing that that that's all that needs to be um handled so um just we do get people who who run into these problems they get an error and we send them a kb which says to do this and and understandably someone's like oh it's scary looking it is it's a little scary looking but you know for for you know it, your, your car makes a noise it doesn't mean you have to fix it yourself you know it, um <laughs> have an it professional um a, address these sorts of problems and you're going to be fine and you know the whole the, the whole world all the graphic design and desktop publishing industries everybody has to deal with thousands and thousands of fonts and and have them installed so everyone is dealing with true type fonts and true type font issues and, and so they're much easier to address in the grander scheme because it's a standard thing you, you want to get a run-of-the-mill um, IT person and you say uh, my SHX font is not displaying correctly they have to have a very specific experience with AutoCAD and SHX fonts to help you out and, and so it's just yet yeah, one more reason why even though some aspects of true type fonts might seem scary or complex um, the, the ubiquity and, and standardness um, of them makes them just simply far superior agreed um the other reason that i really like this command prompt um and to show this directory of of fonts is because it's actually listing the actual font name um of what it actually is and that really relates to the cad side especially if you're if uh, this next thing that I'll, i'm going to be showing um you need to know what this is so uh for example um this lead font regular like i couldn't type um to, to replace a font style lead font regular, I have to actually go into here, I have to right click, I have to go to properties, and I have to see what it's actually named. This is the actual name of the font itself. And doing it this way um, literally just brought all, all the, the entire font list as it is um, displayed or, or for what it actually is. So it just makes it nice that you you have a list to go to instead of having to go into each one individually um, for that. So that's all I wanted to kind of go over there. Uh, we're just going to kind of close those guys for the time being. Um, and I'm going to open up our first one. Now I'm opening up this one here. Um, I'm going to show you here. This one came with Architect um, SHX here. So Whatever's in this drawing must have been using that font style. I'm assuming we all know what this one looks like. It's beautiful. It is lines. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and open up this drawing and see how it goes. So this, I wanted to kind of shed light as to what issue we might run into. Okay. So opening this file up, I can tell right off the bat that this is not architect text. Now, where do we go to, to double check things? Obviously, um, we have our, our properties, um, again, that we can open up and see, you know, if I, I select this guy here and see, okay, he is call out light, is the textile. So here's the power of the textiles, right? Is we can open up our textile manager. I can see call out light is, is defined in here. And it says, that it's architect text, but that is not accurate. Um, the reason being 
is the system actually is pulling because it found it right here and it's labeled architect text um, as the SHX font. If I simply change him to whatever I want to and even regen that plan or uh, redefine the textiles, sorry. Oh, now it's not working. Why is that? Well, I probably have to shut down CAD. And this is a thing that as we're trying to troubleshoot these, these different issues, CAD does need to be recached a lot of times. So um, for this to, to actually take hold, because it's looking at these registries, it's looking at the fonts um, that it's loaded in and it stops. So there we go. I open it back up after I uh, made a modification and he's actually uh, showing up exactly the way that it should now. So again, from a um, where the system's looking at and how it's pulling in those um, those font styles, now that it cannot find what that architect text actually is, it's going to look in its directory appropriately and assign the right font. Okay. So what um, what happens if I think I can just leave that one open here. Um, but what happens if I actually open up a file and I've, I've seen the PDF and I know this is hard to, to go back and forth, but this is the PDF that I was given, okay? And I open up the CAD file and it does not look the way that it shows in the PDF. And why is that, okay? Um, this is the prime example of the system not having that SHX file, um, and so it replaces it with a default. And you've guessed it, Simplex is the go-to default way um, from a font substitution. I'm gonna press F2. When I open up this file, um, uh, up a file, I can press F2 and right at the beginning, if there's any kind of substituting going on, it'll tell me right up at the front, okay? So this is really, really important because uh, we can actually see that it's replacing Simplex in place of all of these different guys, and Taro, Daisy Chain, Anthony Wright, and Hollandland, okay? So I apparently don't have these fonts. Um, so it's just gonna mass change all of these. Now that can be a problem because these might be dedicated for specific parts on the plan, and now I can't tell them apart, right? Um, so while at the end of the day, we're translating or we're relaying information and, and nobody's gonna get hurt by the fact that these might all look the same and we can still tell what is going on, um, we still might want a little bit of, of uh, you know, customization to this. So. First and foremost, um, this command that I'm going to show now is essentially going to take the simplex, the standard just mass one, and change it to a font that might be more in line with how you want to be able to identify when font isn't what it should be. Um, and I'm going to go really kind of outrageous here, but the command is font alt. Okay. This font alt is what's going to dictate what font style should be put in place when it's substituting for something else. Um, so what's nice is a true type font, and I'm going to do Joker Man. For a true type font, I don't need to actually include the TTF part. Um, I can even just say what the full name is um, for what it is. For an SHX um, substitution, you need to identify um, that it is an SHX. So with that in place, I can, or I should be able to do a, a regen all. And you can see now this is my, my font substitution. So if I restarted this, um, it would essentially place like, this now. Now, I know for a fact that this isn't going to be on a plan, so I know 
that I need to kind of address it one offs, two offs. Um, but how can I tell? Again, we are going to go to style. And you're going to notice that all of these um, font names that have that little exclamation mark are ones that are missing and that have been um, actually substituted here. So those guys are fully full on missing. Um, I, I do want to disclaimer this whole little section here to say we should not just be substituting for something else. If this is becoming a problem and you're always changing out something, consider what it is that is missing and make sure that it's put onto the computer. So um, you'll notice here, um, and and this is, I think, a really good point. Um, as you're looking in this list from, from a textile perspective, or the, the manager here, this is the AutoCAD version reminder. Um, is every swinging font that it sees on the computer and in the uh, the CAD SHX section, the file path. You'll notice that anything with a little TT is a true type. You will notice anything with this little uh, compass guy and the .shx is an SHX file. Um, there may B, um, and we're not going to fully cover it. I don't know that I have any in here um, with an OTF, and that's an open type font. And the only way um, AutoCAD does not work with OTFs, but the only way that it does accept it is if it has um, true type outlines. As long as it has true type outlines, it will read it in. Um, otherwise, it does not read um, open types. So that's what you got here. That's how you can tell what a font is, whether it's true type um, or SHX is that indication there. But a missing one has the little little exclamation mark. Okay. So um, again, make sure that you're you're accounting for the fonts that that really need to be there. But if you're working consistently with um, a firm that you receive files from, you know the file, the the textiles that you're going to get. Um, you you can't have those font styles, and so you have to replace them. I'm going to show one more way, and I'm going to close down CAD because this does does require a restart of CAD. So we'll just do it right now. Um, and that is, we're going to navigate to um, a file mapping uh, deal, and actually. I should have showed you. It's in your um, your options support paths, and I'll show you that in a second. But I'm just going to go there uh, manually, and I have path saved. So we will go there really quick. So I'll I'll drop it down so you can kind of see. Um, it's in users. See users. The username, app data roaming, Autodesk, AutoCAD, the version um, down into the support folder. Okay. And I'll show you where this is. You can find the path that yours is set to. Um, but you'll notice this ACAD FMP file. And if you open up this in a text editor, notepad or, or anything else like that, you'll see that it has this random list. Now, I've, I've noted these out um, already for our purposes here. Um, but you'll notice there are some defaults. This is basically one font. This semicolon is the delineation of where to say, okay, what am I replacing it with? So this is the old, the original, and replace it with that one, okay? So I've got Antaro as the original one that I found because I pressed F2 in that CAD file. And I saw that list of missing fonts. So I said, hey, I want every time that Entero comes in, I want lead font to come in. Every time that it sees daisy chain, I want country blue, blueprint to come. Um, and so on and so forth. So we should, I'm going to go ahead and remove those little notes and save this file. So if I open up, 
this uh, file again, instead of just mass changing it to our Joker font, what we should see now is a converted value um, for what it is. Now, this does not negate the fact that those fonts are still missing. Um, it's just one additional reason why we should be vigilant about just getting that font and going with it because um, if I look in my, well, it does look good and it looks the way that I wanted it to, it converted all those ones over properly. If I go to my styles manager, these are still set to what they initially were, okay? So it's it's just one of those things that you're not going to be able to tell what the font is other than it replacing with the font that you told it to. Um, essentially, easiest thing to do at that point, if it's missing, is to change it to the font that you really need it to be, okay? So that's that's essentially how how those work. I don't know. Do we want to stop there for a little bit and uh, see if we can answer any questions? Um, I, I think we're good for now. You can keep going. Okay, cool. All right. So um, we are going to open up now. I've got a lot of different files here. Why don't we go ahead and open this one. Okay. So something to really kind of consider as well. Um, and, and this is just one more thing that SHX is, the, because they're a shape file, um, confuse the mix a little bit. I am, am told that there's SHX files missing. Now, I at this point, I actually don't know if they're text files or if they're shape files, because it just says um, text or symbols, right? right? So if you're curious, and I would do this only if there's a low number um, to see what they are, um, is specify a replacement for each, each SHX file just to see what they are. Um, because if they're not fonts, they will not show up in the command line uh, from what I can tell. So if I do this, it actually is saying it's a specific SHX for a line type. So there's shape files that generate line types that you might not have. So it's really good to understand what those are so that you can go find them so that you can go put them into um, the place. But then you have to cancel out of every single instance of that if you want to get past it. So it's just something to note that just because you see that SHX error doesn't mean it's a font, but it could be a potential line type, a shape file, or an object file thing um, in the drawing. So, all right. So why are textiles so important? Um, you know, we, we run into things, whether it's a planting plan, irrigation plan, um, all kinds of text representing all kinds of different things. Um, if we're an office that just says I'm using one font style across anything and everything, that's great. Um, but having different text styles allows you to have different looks for different things, whether that's um, from the actual uh, stuff on the plan to an actual schedule. So we'll go ahead and just run a schedule real quick because I forgot to place a schedule. So once we do this, um, we we kind of, uh, I'm going to go back to our style manager to see that we have all kinds of, of textiles defined in the drawing here. So we'll go ahead and let them him drop in. Okay. So again, ST, we can see we have all kinds of, of different textiles going. Now, it gets really, really old trying to to manage everything from this textile manager kind of keeping everything um, in check here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to come over to our preference set now um, bear with me because there's there's two little spots the preference set is is essentially the the basket of all standards that you're going to be using which is cool 
um, because it allows you to define what those textiles are and the fonts and, and the sizes and everything um, here in a preference set. And it also then allows you to set up multiple standards so that if I am working with a different uh, firm or something like that, and they need different fonts, I still have the ability to, if I'm keeping my textiles consistent, I'm just going to say okay to this. Nothing has changed from my, my textiles that I'm using, but you'll notice, and I'll see if I can get all of these different little texts into this. You'll notice that I'm going to type a command, and this command is called redefine all textiles. Okay? Read. Redefine all textiles is going to look at any land effects, land effects specific in your preference set textile that you got going on, and it's going to update every one of those. So when we're talking about trying to make changes um, in a drawing that's already been done with all these textiles and how do we switch them, and it, it is a really big headache. Um, the redefine all textiles allows you to very, very quickly set up a different standard and switch between them without really touching anything. So you can see that all of my um, call out, my schedule title and my schedule text and call out lights and everything are all now unique and different. So it's really cool that I can start to to bounce back and forth without having to manually go into every one of those styles and change fonts and, and try to redefine them in the drawing and stuff like that. Reet is awesome. Um, so if, uh, if we had this guy and we do the same kind of thing, we're gonna just go ahead and, and run a, a Reet here. So we'll make sure that we have the right and set, set, okay, and we'll go ahead and type read. You can see that it updated. Now, this one did not update. Nothing changed here, and why is that? Well, let's take a look. It looks like the textile is my standard font, okay? So I could totally add a new textile. So where do I do that? Um, in our general preferences, just so you're aware, these preferences, these textiles that are listed here um, are specifically ones that Land Effects takes control of and, and uses on a daily with all of the different tools. If you want to utilize additional textiles, you just go to the FX Site tab, go to your text, text manager here. And this is what was shown in the, the preview slide or the slide in the PowerPoint is you have a lot of different ones. It's still the same number or same ones that were shown in general preferences. Those are tied together. So if you make a change here, it does affect the ones in your preference set. This whole text manager is tied to your preference set. So I can add all kinds of new ones here. And what's cool about this one, better than the, the style manager, the textiles there, is you'll notice that this is a very clean list. This list is only fonts that you've kind of actively set as ones that you want to pick. You don't have to scroll through everything um, and try to find what you want. You can build this list up to what you uh, want it to have. So I can go ahead and say, I want a new textile. Um, I'm going to call it um, my standard, what do I call it? My standard font. Say okay. Now he's a part of this preference set, and I can go ahead and pick from uh, this list of text. Now, what if the type of text is not here? Well, we go down, hit add new. You can go ahead. Now, this list is everything, and you can tell. Um, well, got to get to one. Here we go. Right here are some that are modeled as SHX. Otherwise, everything is true type. So now you can go ahead and find whatever one you want um, to to pick from. 
Let's see if we have any, any fun ones. I don't know that I, oh, I guess I'm gonna do L. I'm gonna do my lead font. I'm gonna do this guy. Oh, that font is already installed. Okay, cool. I don't have to to add them there, right? So it's cross-checking you, it's picking um, and making that list for you. And now what I can do is I can drop in a piece of text once I actually fill this out. Okay, so now you can see that this one automatically updated. So I started inserting a new piece of text Oh, that font style, that text style already existed, so it updated itself. So this is text. All right. So now he's already made, it's updated the existing text style. And now if we make a change um, to that font style now, um, it'll it'll update everything because it exists in that in that preference set. So want to um cover a couple different tools here if we have time. Jer, do we have anything uh, critical? Uh, no, not at all. Cool. All right, here we go. So um, we might have um, a bunch of, of different texts here. Now this is um, obviously M text right here. This is just simply text. Um, I'm actually going to make a couple copies of this to show you how cool this is. Um, so with text, some, some tools to help work things, text is like my least favorite, um, object type because it is very limiting. It doesn't give you any control of, of widths and, and line entering and, and multi-lines and stuff like that. Um, so if I wanted to change this over to text or to M text, all I have to do is run text to M text. And you will see that it automatically converted him over to M text. What's cooler is if you have multiple pieces of text and I run text to M text and I select multiple, it will automatically format all of those pieces of text into one bit of M text. And so now everything is is essentially bundled together into that multi-line and you can modify him however you want to. So M text to M text is an awesome uh, little command. Now, if I wanna go further and I wanna go, hey, um, I need this to actually point to this right here. How do I make text into an M leader? Well, I can actually go M text to M leader. And with that one selected, it's going to say, hey, what kind of leader do you want it to be? I'll just pick my standard one and select the M text. And it will automatically create it into um, an M leader with that defined style. So you can take a piece of M text, even as big as this right here, um, and turn him into an M leader very, very quickly which is really cool um, to, to make modifications on. Um, it will automatically create the right um, style for it and everything um, for you to use. So a really, really cool one. The other one um, that is hard to do sometimes if you don't know how to do it is making an actual um, annotative or a, sorry, attribute version of text. So if we have this guy, um, and just so you know, if uh, if you want an M text to be text, just explode it, and now it'll be text. So I can actually take a piece of text like this, and I can run text to a trib, select the actual text. And now it will turn it into this. So if we're trying to put attributes into blocks and stuff like that, and I have a little piece of text that I want sort of dynamically to be able to be prompted and filled out as I insert it, text to a trib isn't a really, really cool one um, for that. So 
just wanted to throw a couple of those those little tools in there for you um, at the end. I know we're like right at the end of our our deal, but do we have any last little questions, comments? We absolutely do. You, you know, um, Steve chimed in that, you know, they've got so many thousands of details already created with Simplex. And so there's, you know, realistically no way that they could change that. And, you know, there's a shout out um, for Batchman. Let's show it um, right now. Batchman can redefine all text in all files extremely quickly. Yep. You can add folders and sub folders of files, specific folder, a specific file. Just make sure you um, have, uh, I believe it's you have active the right preference set. Is that correct? It's going to be, well, with details, it'll, it's actually going to um, automatically set the, the preference set. It's the same as if you opened the detail. So okay. it will set with that, whatever preference set is one. set for that, for that detail. Perfect. So if that detail's in a certain project, it will set that preference set active. But Perfect. yeah, that'll zip through and redefine them all. And so you can very easily um, switch. You know, and and yep. that's expressly why that feature was engineered. Yep. Um, so, you know, again, there's been a lot of back and forth from, from a lot of the attendees regarding true type fonts. Um, you know, still see a lot of, you know, fear of moving that way that, you know, it's it's too hard to find them, too hard to download them, et cetera. Um, just again, really, really cannot stress enough how much you really should be using true type fonts for every single font. Um, it has been many years since SHX fonts are, are frankly acceptable um, to be sending out. It's just simply unprofessional um, in, in a PDF. Um, yes, it may take a little bit of time to find the right font that you want, and you might have to purchase it if, if that's the one you, you, you decide you must have, but there are plenty of free Free ones available like the Adobe library, like the Google fonts, um, and so on. So th they really are out there. It, it really does not take that much effort to really up your font game. Um, and, and so just really, really can cannot stress that strongly enough. And, and, and I, I just I, I would say, see for yourself, open up a PDF that you generate and try searching for text and copying and pasting text if it was generated from SHX font. And, and you'll see yourself that you are just making everyone's life miserable because you just simply don't want to spend a little bit of time and find some incredibly gorgeous fonts. So, uh, you know, hate to call you out on that, everybody, but yeah. really, you don't really, have really. to use Arial. You don't have to be don't on have to Arial. Use Arial. There's yep. a lot yeah. of available and standard fonts across the board that will will work great they're fantastic and and we're here to help you through that transition um because yeah that's certainly our standard here we deal with you know whatever true type font issues there are on a daily basis um it's no problem and and lastly since shx fonts are only in autocad you never know is there going to be a future version of autocad that will finally stop supporting them it, it probably will happen, right? And so the Revit, the Revit you know, thing is the thing that kicked it for me is like, mm -hmm. you have to use TrueType. If you're using Revit, you don't want to do yourself a disservice yeah. and keep going with SHX. Well, and also, you know, AutoCAD mobile, you know, like the, uh, the, the, you know, if it's a, if it's not an SHX font that comes with CAD, I don't think AutoCAD mobile will support that either. And, you know, that that's only going to be more, uh, you know, powerful to, to be able to, you know, open a drawing from a website, just to check at it and mark it up. Um, so yeah, just, just lots and lots of reasons. Anyway, um, we'll leave it at that. Everybody have such a fantastic weekend. It's beautiful, beautiful weather here. I know I'm going to have fun. Hope you all do too. And we will see you next time. Thanks guys.